so now the next topic that we are going to start is bile duct first i will discuss the anatomy of bile duct so as you can see here uh, initially the uh, left hepatic duct and the right hepatic duct they joins to form a common hepatic duct this common hepatic duct then joins the cystic duct to form a common bile duct so this is a left hepatic duct here this left hepatic duct joins the right hepatic duct they both together joins and forms a common hepatic duct this common hepatic duct then joins the cystic duct to form common bile duct and this common bile duct then joins the pancreatic duct then this common junction dilates to form ampulla which ultimately then opens into the second part of duodenum which opens into the second part of duodenum okay now the diameter for common hepatic duct is 4 mm and the diameter for common bile duct ranges from 5 mm to 10 mm this diameter for common bile duct is important because in case if there is any biliary obstruction that is below the level of uh, that is at the level of ampulla or at the level of distal cbd there will be dilatation of cbd and dilatation of the common hepatic duct as well as dilatation of the intrahepatic biliary radicals okay so this is liver the dilatation of intrahepatic biliary radicals will also be there so we should remember the normal diameter okay now there is a very common question that is asked like how many sphincters are there number of sphincters in total at the at this level at the pancreato biliary junction at the level of ampulla so we have a total of two sphincters at the level of bile duct one at the level of pancreatic duct and one at the level of ampulla so a total of four sphincters are there superior colidocus sphincter inferior colidocal sphincter then sphincter pancreaticus and sphincter ampullae okay so in total there are four number of sphincters now regarding the blood supply the bile duct is supplied by two sources okay regarding the blood supply there are two major sources first is by right hepatic artery and the cystic artery and second is from the pancreatic or duodenal arcade or the retro and also the retro duodenal artery so this right hepatic artery and cystic artery they supply the bile duct from above downwards and this pancreatic or duodenal and retro duodenal arcade supplies the bile duct from below upwards okay and So suppose if this is a bile duct here there is blood supply which is coming from above and then there is blood supply coming from below so around 60% of the blood is supplied by the pancreatic or duodenal arcade so this is responsible for the main blood supply and around 30 to 40% of the blood is supplied by the right hepatic artery
now these uh, arteries they uh, form a channel along the bile duct and they run parallel to the bile duct okay so the arteries run at the 3 o'clock and the 9 o'clock position So that is why to avoid injury to the blood supply of the bile duct, we prefer giving a vertical incision on the bile duct rather than a horizontal incision. That is why we give a vertical incision on the bile duct. Okay, so this is regarding the blood supply. You can see here, this is a 3 o'clock artery, this is a 9 o'clock artery. And uh, here, uh, this uh, the gastrodurnal and the posterior superior pancreatic duodenal artery they supply the major supply around 60 to 70 percent, and then the right hepatic artery and the cystic artery around 30 to 40 percent. 